few days ago, we left the Mo offices on our 2016 adventure touring shootout, and it turned out to be too adventurous. So if you're any good at math, you'll notice there's six riders and five bikes. Kevin, what happened to the Super Tenere? Well, that's the too adventurous part. Uh, we had a great GPS route a local in Big Bear gave us. We may have taken a wrong turn or two. We got into some real rocky areas that disagreed with the Yamaha Super Tenere oil pan. Yeah, we got to a point up there in the mountains where we didn't know exactly what was ahead of us, but we sure as hell didn't want to turn around and go back. So yeah, Sean, what was your uh, opinions on yesterday's route? What's happened though is, is there's kind of record drought. The, uh, all the trails have turned to like talcum powder. So it's just real silty and, and it gets real, real washy out. And then you get these waterfall staircase downhills that used to just be a, a nice ramp. And now there's like a chuck hole with, with a lip with, where there may have been a rock that will hold a, a lip. And then the sand will wear away underneath it. So uh, we got to one of those sections that looked like a staircase going down. I uh, grabbed the Tenere from one of the other riders to take it down that, and uh, there was no crash or anything, but just it going down, didn't hear anything, didn't didn't feel any different, got to the bottom and stopped, and Evans goes, uh, look by your boot, <laughs> big river of oil coming out. It knocked two holes in the pan going over one ledge, and that was it for the Super Tenere, and we were a long way from home. Yeah, which goes to show how important a good bash plate is, and most of these bikes here, the ones left, have you know a decent one. And when we're talking about adventure bikes, the newest contender here is the Honda Africa Twin. It's uh, not as technologically advanced as some of the other more expensive ones here, but it's quite reasonably priced, $13,500. And uh, it does everything well. So putting that in a group of a bunch of other bikes that we've had uh, some experience with, it really goes to show how wide the class has gotten. There's, there's the primitiveness, the, the simplistic nature of something like the Africa Twin to something like the BMW, which has everything, including a gear shift assistant and today, uh, the kitchen sink. The Africa Twin, it's 1,000 cc. Everything else here has been uh, 1,200 cc's or so, except the Tiger. We brought in the 800 cc Tiger XCX to give the Africa Twin a, a little bit of a, a buffer zone on either side to see how this whole adventure class sorts itself out. And it's actually the only non-twin motor here, you know, being a triple. Everybody else, we got parallel twins and V-twins. Uh, it kind of seems to be the engine of choice among these big adventure touring bikes. An interesting thing about the, the Tiger XCX, it's, it's the smallest bike here. You'd think it would be the most dirt worthy. It's the XCX, it's not the XR or one of the others. And yet, it feels the most like a sport bike, and it is probably the least suited off-road, although it does have an off-road worthy bash plate on it. It does, and I'd like to say the same thing we found with the Explorer is the electronics package is actually pretty good. When you put this thing in its preset enduro mode, it, it works really well. You know, it, it, it rearranges the TC and ABS and stuff, and I, you know, switched it to that and took off and was really happy with, you know, the way its settings are. And when you got little old me on board, I appreciated its lightweight. Its, its drawbacks in the dirt for me were the light flywheel and a small clutch engagement zone. But otherwise, just being able to toss it around in the tight confines of some of the places we were at, I actually enjoyed it off-road pretty well. Another uh, class distinction here, we have uh, three 21-inch front wheels, including the X, uh, XCX and the Africa Twin and the KTM 1190R. The others are, have 19-inch front wheels. But that 19 on the Ducati Multistrada Enduro works quite well. Uh, it didn't seem to be suffering for not having a 21-inch front. It helps with those Pirelli Scorpion tires. They're semi-knobbies and they work pretty good off-road and they work pretty good on-road too. I really like the Ducati's engine. We were talking before about the traction control, how it cuts in, but it never feel, like, leaves you feel like it's going to die on you when you roll on the throttle. So it just keeps chugging along. It's like, um, I think somebody said locomotive-like or, or tractor-like. It just gr 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 grunts down and, and gets you through it, which um, me being the least experienced dirt rider here made me feel a lot more comfortable. This is what I loved about this thing. I had to press it for two. 
It's very, very light steering, but it's not unstable. It's kind of got a long wheelbase. So here we are, we're on the off-road tires, which are pretty well full knobbies. They don't have the on-road grip as the tires we rode on road at the press intro, but bike's very confidence inspiring. These giant bars give you such good leverage on the on the Multistrada Enduro. The, the old standby BMW over here is still, I think, one of the high water marks when it comes to these big, expensive, just do everything comfortable. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the balance, it's, it's power delivery. I mean, you could go coast to coast, you could do the Afri uh, Alaska Highway, you know, any, any of this stuff. Yeah, it's, it's comfortable true. on that motorcycle. It's like, yeah, if you, after I was on that one, kind of top heavy, and the, the KTM is also way tall and too tall for me to ride. And I, you know, a couple bad experiences on that, and you get on the BMW, which is, I don't know if the seat's any lower, but it's just the, 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 the cylinders are down there or something. It just feels like it's got a better, lower center of gravity and the grunty nature of that big uh, boxer twin. That thing's like, a, it's a, it, I think I call it a pack mule a couple times, because you can just chug along in first gear and second gear, and it's great, and, and, and you know it'll take you through anything. But then it'll, 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 it'll go like hell when you get back on the That's pavement, the too. Since, since they got to the water-cooled motor, it still has that tractor-leg low-end, yeah. like the old air-cooled one yeah. did. But when you rev it out, it actually has some good oh, top-end power. And it has it's some more poop. fun to ride than the old one used to be. And it right. sounds much better than yeah. it used to sound. It sounds pleasantly aggressive. It's the easiest one to swap modes and stuff. Mm. Oh, look, mode. Boom, <laughs> boom. <laughs> Euro-ray right. road. That's how ABS. Should I mean, That's how they yeah. should all be. And another thing about the GS, uh, shaft drive. Everything else here is chain drive except for the Super Tenere, which also has a uh, shaft drive. So if you're looking for to put on a lot of mileage, yeah. if you're looking to put on a lot of mileage without having to lose your chain or adjust it all the time, that's a big benefit. BMW R1200 GS. Kind of silted out, little little whoopee desert road here. Sort of, I don't know if I'm riding it or it's riding me right now, but BMW is a hell of a good street bike and it's really capable in this kind of stuff. I think the Honda would have would have maybe been my very favorite dirt bike of the group if it had had knobby tires. As you can see here, these are not made for sand or the kind of terrain we were on at all. Um, but if it had the Ducati's tires or something, I think, you know, it's already one of my favorites on the road, and, and I think it might have been my favorite off-road with better tires. As it is, I think the Ducati was my favorite off-road. Now they had, uh, at the press launch for that, they gave us a spin off-road with the knobby tires. and It was amazing, it, right? It would, yeah, it just changes the whole bike's yeah. demeanor. It could have done everything that we did yesterday just as well as that KTM. And I, I gotta say about the Africa Twin, when we first heard about it and then we dyno tested it, like 85 horsepower or something like that, it was a little bit underwhelming. But I tell you, in this group of powerful bikes, it never really felt underpowered, and I think they've hit a real nice sweet spot here. Instead of trying to get another 1200cc adventure touring bike, they went 1000cc, and there's a lot of benefits to be had with that bike. Yeah, on the, on the spec sheet, the Africa Twin is unimpressive. And it's hard, it's when I did the, the, the initial press launch, it's hard to convey like just how well the bike works as a package you know it is lighter weight the handling's good it can be a serious off-roader but yet yeah, still comfortable and for the guy that doesn't need 160 horsepower the ducati brings to the table you know the honda will scooch you know down the freeway no problem yeah every time i jumped on the honda on the street i was instantly comfortable it seemed to be the most neutral steering with some of them like the ducati i had to adjust my turn in and stuff like that but whereas with the, the honda i just got on it and was able to ride immediately. For me, I think of all the bikes here though, that the Honda was the least, um, what should I say, the least disappointing. -er. I wasn't upset about the fact that it didn't have knobby tires on it. I know that if it had knobby tires on it, it would be a whole lot better. It would be right in the same zone as the KTM and I, I think even maybe a little bit better. Um, one thing for a dirt bike guy that I think that the Africa Twin brings to the table is how simple it is. You say that the spec sheet isn't all that impressive, but if you're a dirt bike guy who wants to get into adventure touring, this bike is very familiar to you already. You have, you know, mechanical clickers on the forks. You have a preload knob back here on the shock. There's nothing that you have to scroll through or have a, a degree in computer science in order to figure out how to turn off the damn ABS. You know, with this bike, you can do all that very simply. 
I think for most people, this would be a great entry level uh, uh, adventure touring bike. The price makes it that way. You know, you can get good crash bars for it. The bags are decent. You know, it's an impressive motorcycle. So now we're on the Africa Twin here. I tell you what, the little Honda's ergonomics are just about square perfect. Neutral, upright rider triangle, and the bars aren't too high or too low. They're just sort of right in the right spot. So it makes it very easy to ride. I want to say some things about the bike that isn't here to be seen. That's the Tenere. Um, as one of you know, the people who has to carry a lot of camera gear around, I selected that because I thought the bags looked particularly sturdy and I was able to pack my camera gear in there and feel safe for the off-roading stuff. The locks is a little bit fidgety, but I was never worried about it coming unlatched. And it even proved to be pretty crash-worthy. Um, on one descent, um, I clipped a rock with my front wheel, and I, then, being the least experienced guy here, I overcorrected and went right off the trail into the bushes and went boom, right down on that bag with all the camera gear on it. And it was fine. We picked it up. There was not a scratch on it. I think that the Tenere also is a very excellent road bike. It was one of the better road bikes for me out of this group of six. Um, really excellent feedback going through the corners. It's got a very stable feel to it when you're when you're you know transitioning side to side. Maybe a touch heavy, but you know overall the, the power delivery is excellent for for road riding and uh, really comfortable saddle. I really I really enjoyed that bike. They yeah, got the cruise long... control on there, so you can cruise yeah, cruise okay. control. Cruise control is on that one as well. Got ride modes now. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a nice bike. I, I I really enjoyed it on the road too. Yeah, a really good 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 oh, front end yeah. feel. And our bike had the electronic suspension version, so you can like dial it up yep. to different suspension settings. And I was really impressed when I was sport riding that bike. It had less front end dive than the Ducati and the Africa Twin. And uh, the Ducati's got dynamic suspension on it. And so, yeah, I thought I was pretty impressed with it. For a long distance touring bike, I think the Super Tenere's got a lot of good qualities here. I think if there's one thing for me that sums up the KTM, it's motor. I mean, that V-twin yanks hard down low. It doesn't rev as high as I would like it to, but you know, for what you're doing out in the dirt with a big heavy bike like that, grunting around, I mean, the throttle response is excellent. Yeah. Um, I was really impressed how you could just hold it in one gear and just ride it for days in that same gear, no, no matter how tight, slow, fast, rocky, whatever. You know, the W suspension on the bike, you know, that's world-class stuff. I mean, it really works well. Um, it's a, it was a little bit tall for me again, being a shorter guy, but once you got going, uh, even to a greater degree than the Ducati, that went away. And it felt more like a like a off-road bike to me at that point. And uh, we were going to talk to the Ducati for its motor. We did a roll-on contest between the Ducati and the KTM. It was pretty much neck and neck. So the KTM's got some serious motor there too. I know that uh, as a road bike, the KTM, we were coming over Angeles Crest. And uh, I, don't, I don't really like those tires on the, on the street. They, the front feels a little, a little, a little wishy-washy to me. So I kind of go a little bit slower in the corners. But then I just get on the gas on the way out and trust the, trust the uh, traction control. And uh, it kind of feels like, like a vintage super bike you're riding. It just closes the gap up on the other bikes at the exits. Like, So the KTM is just a big dirt bike. It's uh, got a ton of motor, really a, a ton of motor. Best bottom in, a, in the group by far. This KTM 1190 Adventure R pulls that Ducati everywhere. Um, and uh, that's really impressive because these are, these are big, fast bikes. For this thing to, to step out on that Ducati, you know, wow, that's 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 a lot of power. If you want the most dirt bikey of them all, this is definitely it. This KTM 1190 Adventure R is uh, for for a, for a multi-cylinder motorcycle about as close as a dirt bike as you're going to get. Uh, well, I don't know among the six of us if we have a consensus on, say, the best bike here. Uh, I mentioned earlier that if I was going cross country, it'd probably be one of the bigger bikes. If I was just going dirt and I lived five miles from an off-road trail, I would probably go with the KTM. 
Uh, best bike though, do we have something guys? Or some, does somebody disagree about the KTM being maybe the best dirt bike? Well, I think what we all agree on, there are three best dirt bikes, right? KTM, the Ducati, and the Africa Twin. I think those are the standouts off-road. We got some dissension of which is the best, the preference. But, but as far as off-road goes, if you were adventure touring and you are going to be off-road, I'd pick one of those three bikes. And I think Scott made a good point earlier, saying that we're putting the Africa Twin in with those bikes, and it was the only one not wearing knobbies. Yep. And so if it had knobbies on, um, it might have stood even taller than it already does. Yep. Speaking of standing taller, I think if you're on the smaller side, the Africa Twin is the way to go, because it's a lot lighter. And it's not even the weight as much as it is the height of the KTM. This one, I think I could have made the loop yesterday on the Africa Twin without, without tumping over if I'd been on the Twin the whole time, just because I can touch down and it's, there's not as much weight up here. So yeah, those are the three best in the dirt. The other three are pretty adequate in the dirt too and really good on the road. The Triumph is cool because it's so light and it's got a sport bikey motor. It's really fun to ride on the road. The Super Tenere, really comfortable and it just feels like you could go for miles and miles and miles. And then the GS Adventure, boy, that thing, there's nothing that it really can't do. I don't know, the GS to me is more like grandma's house, man. It, it just it feels like going home. GSs have always had this. They have this granny first gear and this real nice clutch and you can just crawl the thing around at like one mile an hour and it's got almost a 90 degree steering lock and a low center of gravity so like when you're just moving around in tight spaces the GS all the weight disappears. We mentioned how much we like the Africa Twin on these more road oriented tires off-road. Uh, when I hopped on it on road it was about my fourth bike in the rotation or something like that I immediately said oh I, I love this thing I hadn't ridden it before this past. Uh, there's something about the, the, the ergonomics of the Honda where you, your, your bar height to seat height to peg relationship is all just right. You're not sitting down in the bike, you're not sitting way up over the top of the bike. It's very neutral. It's super natural to ride on road. If you want to talk about a natural yeah. feeling motorcycle, you get on that and you feel yep. comfortable immediately. And, and friendly. It's just, yeah. it's a friendly bike that's I think you not said, slow. You said, said it kind of has that the XRR DNA, it, it even does. though it's it CRF like XRF, now, but yeah. it, it feels like a big friendly puppy of a dog that you can trust, but it's yeah. not a dog. It's not a dog. <laughs> it's a really great bike. <laughs> And that's where it comes down to how we rank these bikes in a scorecard, right? This GS has gear shift assist, and is that important to you? Maybe it is, so you'll pay the extra money for it. So for the whole story, you gotta go to Motorcycle.com and read everything we have to say about how they rank in different categories. We got six great motorcycles, we like them all. It's only gonna be one winner though. asking me if it was warm out there on the ride today and these are the socks I wore. Don't don't lose that moisture. Put that in a jar. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs>